Hello Internet, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to speed paint Tyranid models in the high fleet of Jorgen Munda. Let's dive straight into this and I'm going to be painting up this Tyranid Turvigon. And start going to base coat the flesh with Corvus Black and a drop of Vallejo Purple. Now you know me, if something needs to be a certain colour, I like to give the shadows a slightly different colour to help everything pop. Now, that doesn't really work with black, because the darkest point would ideally need to be black, so instead I'm going to make all of the highlights and such a slight off black, meaning it's been mixed with a different colour, and I'm choosing purple, because it's got bits of red, which means it's a bit fleshy and stuff, and it's going to be on all the fleshy areas, so that makes sense to me. And you know, I'm obsessed with purple and seem to work it into almost every paint job. I'm going to be using my airbrush for this and this is just for convenience and because I'm trying to teach myself how to use it still, I'm just exposing myself to it as much as I possibly can. Covering a large area like this is a great chance for me to use it. You by no means have to, just get out a big brush and slap this paint on all over the flesh. Whilst messing about with the flesh, I was progressively mixing in a bit more purple and spraying a bit more from above to try and create a sense of highlighting. It didn't really work as well as I wanted to, so feel free to skip this step because we're going to manually highlight this area later anyway using brushes. Now when it comes to the carapace, it's meant to be a bright yellow. And as I had primed this model with a Xenophil highlight, all the top areas, aka most of the carapace, was already white which is a great undercoat for yellow because it's such a transparent colour you need something quite light underneath it. Or alternatively you do a lot of thin coats and it's a bit tedious. I had to do this admittedly. Just paint on a few good layers of Avalon Sunset until you get a nice solid layer of yellow. Now obviously an issue with doing multiple thin coats is the drying time. You don't really want to start the next layer whilst it's wet, which is why this technique is brilliant for when you were doing a, an assembly line kind of thing. If you're doing a whole unit of termagants or something, then you could do one carapace, two carapace, two carapace. By the time you get to the twelfth, the first one's definitely going to be dry. You can give them all their second coat, fish bash bosh, yellow's done. After this I figured it was a good idea to ruin that clean yellow by applying a dark wash all over it. Not a black, because it doesn't really add anything to a colour. If you're going to be adding black, it just makes it look horrible. So instead of went for brown, you could also use a sepia or something like that. Just wash it over all of the carapace to bring out all the different details and whatnot. Let it settle in the recesses. Try not to let it pull on the large flat areas because it looks a bit strange. So wick away at it with your brush and wait for that to dry and then we'll come back with some highlights. Once that's dried, I went in with a dry brush and started to dry brush on Uriel Yellow. The yellow is obviously not important, just make sure that it's a lot lighter than your initial yellow. Using a dry brush on this makes it a lot quicker and it applies it in a very organic matter, which is great for when you're doing creatures like this. The last highlight colour for the carapace is going to be a bone colour. Whether that be a citadel paint like a shabti bone or screaming skull or a vallejo paint like bone white, it does not matter. Just use a bone colour for your final dry brushing across the yellow. This will make all of the raised areas close to white but also quite close to yellow. It's a brilliant bridge point between the most extreme version of light you can get which is obviously white and the colour that you're aiming for, which is in this case yellow. Now when it came to highlighting the flesh, I was a little hesitant on what colours to use because I haven't really done this before. So as I had mixed in a bit of purple earlier, I thought that's probably the best way to do it. I made a mix of paint that was very similar to what I had base coated it in earlier, being Corvus Black and some purple, and then I added a bit more purple to the mix so that it was slightly more saturated. And then I dry brush this over all the flesh, making sure to only really do this in a downward motion. And that is because right under the belly of the monster, we want it to be at its darkest point. So we don't really need highlights down there. Then after that, I added a slightly lighter purple to the mix, making it pop a little bit more and dry brushing a smaller portion of the flesh. Again, focus on the tops. 
You want to be staying away from the bottom unless you're like walking over a puddle or something, a very reflective surface, in which case, I'm not gonna get into the science of that, but there would be reflections down there too. This video is sponsored by the subscribe button. I am lonely, please subscribe, please. Now it's up to you whether you apply a wash on the flesh or not, because it started as such a dark color, it might not be necessary, but if you want to add a sort of sheen to it, then it could be a good idea. I chose to go with Caraport Crimson for the reason that if it settles in the crevices, the pigment will turn it a little bit red, which is obviously good for fleshy areas. While it's not taking away from the fact that it is meant to read as black, if the vast area of the flesh is black, then that's what it's going to read as, and that is what we've got. Now when it came to doing the claws, I knew that I wanted there to be quite a nice smooth transition between the darkest bit, which is going to be closest to the flesh, uh, to the lightest point which will be at the tip of the actual claw. So to do this I was going to employ the technique known as wet blending. So on my palette I got two colours ready. One was a 50-50 mix of a dark red and a black. In my case I chose Corvus Black and Corn Red. Corn Red is my favourite dark red and Corvus Black is a nice matte black. And then the other paint that I had on my palette was Mephiston Red, which is quite a vibrant and rich in hue red. I start by painting to around the halfway point on the claw using the black and red mix. And then I quickly wash my brush and apply the Mephiston Red to the tip of the claw. Once the two paints start to meet in the middle, I use my brush to jump back and forth in between the two and you will see a slow transition between the two colors. This is what is known as wet blending. You are using the two paints whilst they are still wet on the actual model and blending them together with your brush. It can be quite tricky to understand at first and if you want a more in-depth video on how to do this technique, let me know in the comments below and I will do a future video covering wet blending. For the eagle-eyed amongst you, you may have noticed at the beginning of this video that I have a new logo, something I am very happy with. The orc skull and crossbones with the bones formed from paintbrushes. If you like this design as much as I do, there'll be a link in the description down below where you can get it printed on t-shirts, mugs, phone cases, stickers, whatever you want, and shipped right to your house. And yeah, it'll be awesome. At least it would be awesome for me to know that somebody likes me enough to do that kind of thing, but no pressure. <laughs> Once I was happy with the transition between the two colours, it was time to apply a little bit of orange to that Mephiston red and concentrate that on the very tips of the claws. I then edge highlighted the claws using an orange as well. Now if you're worried that the colour of the claws is going to read as orange because I've been using that as the highlights, that will not be a problem. As long as the majority of the colour on this area is red, that is what it's going to read as. And if the highlight is related to red, then it will work. What I mean by this is orange is 50% yellow and 50% red. So red is in the colour makeup, which means it's related, so it's not going to look out of place by using it as a highlight on this colour. Now I'm going to go ahead and paint all of the things that are non highly specific, such as the teeth and the tongue, basically just the mouth in general, the eyes, yeah, you know, the base and whatnot. And then I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like when it's complete. there we have it, a relatively easy way to paint High Fleet Jorgen Munder. And fun fact, Jorgen Munder is the name of the world serpent in Norse mythology, which wraps itself around planet Earth, or Midgard, one of the nine realms of Yggdrasil, um, and contains the seas. It stops the seas just apparently falling off our planet. So the year has come to a close and I would just like to say a big thank you for all of you that stuck around this year from the previous year and a big thank you to everyone that's joined us. The channel has grown which has been lovely to see. It's been nice getting to know all of you in the comments and stuff so if you want to say anything obviously leave a comment because I always respond and it's, I just love hearing from all of you. 
If you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see in the new year, please let me know in the comments. And make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you want other people to see it. Although you could also just share it, that would also be really useful. I'm going to leave you with a sneak preview of what is on my work desk at the moment, which may or may not relate to New Year New Army. And until the next year, I will see you later.